picture of what's going to happen out on the sea. He's saying, man, the waves are crazy. Everything's crazy, but the God's on top of it. The waves were the problem. Oh, man. You see, my problem is his platform. My problem is nothing more than a platform for him to stand on top of and say, I ain't left you yet, baby. It may look tough, but I'm still with you. And when you can get a revelation that every problem you go through is just a platform to stand, that God can stand on and say, I'm still here. Look how good I am. Like, get this. Here's the problem. The sea. We're going to die. It's a ghost. Everyone's freaking out. And Jesus comes walking on top of the water. And like we read this and we think like, oh, it was nice and calm and everything was great. And like, you know, like Jesus just kind of like walked out there like, what up? <laughs> like, no, this are waves. Like he is like. <laughs> like he is walking on top of the problem. That's powerful. There's nothing that's too big for our God. There's nothing that he can't stay on top of. But the problem is we try to handle our problems ourselves and we're saying, no, no, don't come on top of this, God. I got this. I'm, I'm better than this. I know you want to. I'm trying to make you proud. I'm trying to make you proud. No, no, he's already proud of you. Just let him on top and it's going to work out. He came walking on the water. You can't make that up. I mean, this is why most believers are like, he was walking on the water. No, 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 you got to think deeper than that. He's on top of what you're struggling with. There's nothing that's too hard for our God. My problem is his platform. And anything I ever go through is just for him to remind me that he's still on top of it. I ain't got no money in the bank. No, 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 no. My God shall supply all your needs. I'm getting depressed. I feel lonely. Like the number one thing we deal with in our young adult and student ministry is depression. Kids that come in and they don't believe that a God could love them because no one else in their life does. And that's why we just have to come in and we say, no, no, what do you mean? You can't believe that God could love you. He is love. All he knows how to do is love. He can't not do who he is. You just got to let him there. And they're saying, no, I don't, I don't want to. Okay, no, no, let me show you what the Bible says. Let me, let me take you somewhere. See, compassion would be like, well, let me pray for you. And then let me kind of just go over to some kids that get it. But compassion will have you messed up. Compassion is messy. It's a lot more than just on Facebook, I'm praying for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot more than just like, oh, let me just check you off the list. Compassion is not comfortable. <laughs> Compassion has you up at night saying, why don't they get it? I got to do something. Compassion is more than just let me put a nice verse on Facebook. Compassion is, no, let me come to your house. Let me find out what's wrong. Let me get there. Let me help you get through this thing. If, we, if you stuck in it, I'll get in with you too. We going to get through this thing together. And I feel like, especially in our society, our world where we're at now, it's like we've been desensitized to the problems of our world. I was talking about this last week, and it's like everything now is about social media. Everything is there, right there on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram. Everything that goes on in life now is all in the same place. Okay, I want you to get this. So you're on your Facebook feed, and you're going down, and you're like, oh, you know, look, a cute picture of a kitty. This is awesome. I love kitties. Praise God. This is great. And then you go down a little bit more and you're like, oh, wow, a journalist got beheaded in Israel. My God. And you go down a little bit more and you're like, oh, look at these shoes. They're so cute. And then you keep going down. And you're like, oh, my friend just got divorced. And you're unable to tell what's serious and what's not because it's all in the same place. Uh, did you get that? It all has the same real estate. It's all right there. So we don't know what compassion is for what because everything's right there in the same place. That's why most of us found out about today's strategy on our phones because we were doing something else, but then compassion interrupted and said, no, I need you to focus on something important right now. I need you to see what's going wrong, what kind of difference you can make because compassion, it shifts us to where God wants us to be. It moves us to where God wants us to be. I'm almost done. This is where I'll close. Back in the text now. Mark chapter 6, verse 48. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, walking on top of the problem. He meant to pass by them. <laughs> he meant to pass by them. Like, this messed me up when I read this the other day. I never saw this before. Almost as if Jesus wasn't even planning on stopping. Some of you are like, why would Jesus? It's right there in the Bible. 
He meant to pass by them. They were struggling. They're about to drown. And the Bible says Jesus is walking on the water. This is amazing. And it says he meant to pass by. Like he was just going to keep going. He had his own plan. He was like, I got this. But even the son of God had to be redirected because of compassion. He's on top of the water. This is the miraculous. He's doing something unheard of. This is like, what? And they cry out and they say, it's a ghost. We are going to die. They start screaming at each other, crying, peeing all over their cloaks and everything. Like they're tripping. And Jesus is on his way to the other side. And he says, wait a second. Someone is, they're they're misunderstanding who I am. (laughs) I have compassion on people that don't get me. I want them to get me. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to help these fools. And it's like, Jesus is walking on water. But he stops because of people that are about to drown. And again, here's the tension. I know you've been saved. I know you're coming to church. I know everything is great. I know you're watching all the pastor's messages online, and you got your little notebook, and you're taking notes. I mean, you're walking on water, baby. This is awesome. But what about the people that aren't? What good is it for one person to walk on water if 12 people you love are about to drown? Like, I would say it's more impactful for you to get in the boat than to just keep walking by on water. And this is the tension. We don't get this. We're like, no, you don't know how far I came, Pastor Billy. I can't do that. I can't go back. No, I'm done. I'm walking on water. I've been waiting my whole life to walk on water. And Jesus is like, I know. But there's people that you love you're about to pass by. And and it's it's like on your GPS when you're going one way and you miss a turn. And the the stupid things talks back to you, rerouting. (laughs) And so my wife goes, you missed it. I'm like, okay, don't worry. We got this. But that's our life sometimes. We have such a great plan. And I want to do this and I want to do that. And I'm walking on water. And it's like Jesus is like, oh, but you missed it. I know you've been coming to church for a couple months now to Destiny, but don't think that we're just here for ourselves. Our, 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 our main, our purpose here at Destiny is to move you from where you are to where God wants you to be. But like, we can't do that without you. Because I don't know everyone you know. And I'm sure you don't know everyone I know. So we all know different people. But the question is, are we just walking by people that need help? Or are we just like going to stop and say, no, I got this. Come on, help. I got a place you can go. I'm going to get into your boat and we're going to get to the other side together. See, compassion, it redirects you. What's awesome is Jesus promised them. He said, get into the boat. I'll meet you the other side. Get in the boat. I'll meet you the other side. Go to the other side. I'll meet you there. So he meant to pass by because he was like, I got to fulfill my first promise. But even then, we're so jacked up. We couldn't even get to his first promise. He has to stop and come back and say, why are you freaking out? He gets into the boat. The wind cease. And I believe tonight there's some people here tonight that are so Man, I'm so pumped you've been walking on water. I'm so amazed you're posting all these great scriptures and you have a devotion life and you're seeing miracles happen. But don't forget about the people that are in the boat still. Don't forget about the people that aren't going to see. They're going to be like, oh, my gosh, it's a ghost. They're going to try to call you something you're not. Most of us stop right there. We say, oh, well, if they're going to talk bad about me, I'll just keep going. They freaked out. They said, it's a ghost. Jesus could have been like, man, they're tripping. They're not worth my time. But when somebody calls you something you're not, you don't just run from them. You know, you better go and clarify that thing. You better say, no, no, let me show you the love of God. Let me just say, it's not just about what we do. It's about who we are. Let me stop and show you. Proverbs 16, verse 9, and I'm done. The heart of a man plans his ways in his heart, but it's the Lord that establishes his steps. I know you have plans. I know you have a purpose. You have a destiny. But if God has to redirect you, don't fight him. Just know that he's got something even bigger for you. The message translation of this verse says it like this. It says, we plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. Only God makes you able to live that life. And tonight, there's two kind of people that are in this room. There's people that are in the boat, and there's people that are walking on water. As we come to a close, if you'll close your eyes in this moment, I want to pray for that first group of people that are in the boat. You're here tonight, and you're saying, wow, man, this really spoke to me. I feel something in my life but I got to start. 
I'm tired of just talking about it. I'm tired of just saying the same stuff. I want to start tonight. If you're here tonight and you say, that's me, I'm in the boat. I'm going down. I, I need to know this Jesus that stopped for them. I want him to stop for me. Friend, he loves you too much to just pass you by tonight. And if you're here tonight, you say, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Maybe for the first time, you say, I want to get right with God. I want to know this Jesus. Very quickly, I'm just going to ask you on the count of three to lift your hands. It's just, just for us to be able to pray with you. And if that's you, you say, I want to know Jesus tonight. On the count of three, one, two, three. That's me. I want to know him. Thank you so much. If you could just leave your hands up just for a second, just so I can know who I'm praying for tonight. God's not mad at you. He, he, he's stopping tonight. And if you wouldn't have lifted that hand, he would have just kept going. But tonight, he's stopping for you. Thank you so much. All over this place. Our church is going to pray this prayer with you, and, and, and we just believe what the Bible says. It says salvation is made by confession, and when you confess with your mouth, you believe in him. He comes in. He changes your life, and if that's you, if your hand is lifted, our whole church is going to say this with you. Just repeat after me. Say, dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe he died for me, so tonight I want to live for him. I believe he rose again, so tonight I rise again. I'm saved, I'm restored, and I'm going to be transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We can clap for that. We can thank God for that. Hey, if you made that decision tonight to accept Jesus, please don't just head out. We want to take a second, really love on you, really get a second to meet you. And plus, I just saw you lift your hand, so if you leave, I'm going to chase you down. But on your way out, there's some people out there. They want to meet you. They want to love on you. They just want to get your name. If you don't want to give us your number, don't worry about it. We just want your name. We want to pray for you. We want to believe that God's going to keep doing great things in your life. And it's going to be awesome, okay? Is that good? Good. We got a lot of people in, in our church that want to know you. And one of our sayings has always been, we're, we're big enough to serve you, but we're small enough to know you. And our small groups is how we do that. Our small groups pastor is here. We got people out back that are going to be there to connect you, and it's going to be awesome. So would you stand to your feet tonight as we close, as we come to an end? got so much more sermon in me, but not as much time. So tonight, is, as we finish off, maybe that's you. You're walking on the water, and you're saying, man, I know that I can, I can do more. I can tell you, it starts by just getting connected here. We got people that one service a month, one service a month, they go and stand out there by those doors, and they just smile and greet people as they come by. One service a month. See, you can just keep walking on the water and just say, this is awesome, I'm walking on water, but you don't know how many people come to our church that haven't gotten a smile all week. And you got what they need. Maybe you know how to make coffee. Everybody knows how to make coffee, I hope. We got people out there that serve coffee. There's people that wait until they come to church to have a cup of coffee. You got what they need. It's just about, are you going to stop? Our children's ministry, maybe you love kids. I love kids. Maybe you have what they need. Maybe you just, you're ready for that. Just like out there, we just want to move you to that next step. We want to take you and show you how much God has for you. And I'd encourage you. We're not going to have you lift your hands and put you on the spot. You know what you have to do. You know, Splagnizomehi, on the inside, something is like, I've got to do something. Stop by the table. Just say, I'm ready. Matter of fact, you go back there, use these words, say, I'm, I'm ready to stop. I don't want to just walk by anymore. I want to stop and I want God to know what he, I want to stop and turn and let him show me what's next for my life. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for tonight, God. Thank you for compassion. Thank you for this word. I pray that it doesn't just become a revelation. I pray it becomes application. I pray we walk out and, and, and walk this thing out. Thank you for what you're doing in this church. We know you have so much for us. And tonight we just stop and, and realize how much you have. With your hands stretched for the blessing, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Pray to be gracious to you. I pray that compassion would interrupt your week this week. I pray that compassion would cause you to intervene in something. And the compassion that's on your life would impact the lives of those around you. We love you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. All God's people said.